I'm your host, Logan23, and you're joining me for the Rake and Recluse, Chapter 2. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit! You wave a hand at the mirror, your reflection waves back at you. You jump up and down, she jumps up and down. You stick out your tongue, she does the same. Holy shit! The woman in the mirror has twigs in her hair, dirt on her face, cuts and bruises. Was I attacked? Is that... is that me? You turn to face your three observers. If they weren't concerned about your sanity before, they sure are now. The doctor's fingering his stethoscope like he can't wait to dissect you. The maid looks afraid for her life. And Hot Guy. Hot Guy is just scowling. Um, where am I? Some Victorian era escape room? Hot Guy looks alarmed. God damn it, can you please just ask his name? Escape room? Miss, are you? You are no one's hostage. If I'm not a hostage, then why have you trapped me in here? You are free to leave this very moment. He extends his hand to the door, he resolve wavers. I can't leave before I understand where I am. You cross your arms and stay put. A hot guy takes a step towards you. He is tall. I wish I were wearing my heels. I always feel more powerful in heels. You're suddenly embracingly aware of how revealing your nightgown is. Really, it'd be nice if I were wearing anything at all. I am Gideon Ulrich Tumbrook, the 10th Duke of Rockley. Uh, this is my estate, my land, my manor, and the seat of Rockley Dukedom. Everything you see from these windows within my purview stares at you long and hard, his eyes curious but stern. He is about to explain what all this meant, or at least say something that makes me less, makes more sense than estate, manor, and dukedom. Instead, he pulls a blanket off the bed and hands it to you. Uh, perhaps you would like to cover yourself. He's now looking anywhere but at you. Seriously, the world has turned upside down and he's worried about my flimsy nightgown. Chivalry's not dead in the 1800s, question mark? You thrust your shoulders back. Look, I realize I have no clothes on is a problem for both of us. But I'm not going, I'm not doing a damn thing until you tell me what the hell is going on. Somehow your finger has ended up poking him right in his very firm chest. He glowers down at you. First of all, miss... You must remove your prodding hand from my waistcoat and gather your wits. You will show some semblance of respect when you address me within the boundaries of this estate. He straightens, squaring his shoulders. Is that understood? Gather my wits is a kidding. I should... Apologize. Remember... Remember, ladies, equal rights was an issue just, what, a hundred years ago? Of course, I'm... I'm sorry. You feel all of your energy leave you in a rush. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. He looks briefly sympathetic before his cold mask returns. Perfectly understandable. He seems like he's some kind of an ass. Ugh, oh, Jesus. Again, he clears his throat, clasps his hands are behind his back, and... Once again, takes possession of the room, and everyone in it. Uh, now that you have managed to compose yourself, perhaps I can be of assistance. Definitely an ass. But not the kind of ass I'm used to. Not like Isaac. Gideon's too formal, too strange. You glance at the maid, the doctor, and the room's ornate furnishings before returning your gaze to Gideon. All these people are... Hell, even this room, the clothes. Suddenly, you remember your father's journal and begin to get a sneaking suspicion. Your heart lurches at the thought. Maybe the better question isn't where I am, but when? But I don't want to give him more reason than I already have to think I'm insane. I'd better... Tell him you've lost track of time. Mr. Roxley, his, his duke, uh, whatever, can you tell me... Uh, things are so confused, you, you know my head. You point to your injury. And my tiny woman brain. 
<laughs> okay, I'm done. My tiny woman brain. Could you tell me the date? Uh, certainly. It is April the 14th, 1880. Your knees buckle. Gideon catches you and draws you up to him. The corded muscles of his arms surround you. What did I do? Push him away. You try to break free of his hold, but his arms lock you in place. After a moment, you relent, sinking into his arms with a sigh. 1880. 1880. It's getting hard for you to breathe. Your mind swirls. You try to match your breast to rise and fall of Gideon's chest. Am I having a panic attack? Is this what a panic attack feels like? All my stressful work, all those years spent bouncing through foster homes, even after my parents died, and it never felt like this. Uh, doctor, help me with her. But the doctor dithers like he's scared or crazy he might be contagious. Quickly! Gideon and Dr. Walcote guide you to the bed. A Gideon is surprisingly gentle as he lays you against the pillows. Could Dad have been right? Have I somehow traveled back in time? If I have, then, then I know the opinion of women isn't very high, and I haven't given a lot of them cause to think me sane. If I want to find out what's really going on, I'd better pretend to faint so I can eavesdrop, demand and know what they're planning. You push yourself out of his arms, Gideon glares at you. Tell me what you plan to do with me. Ah, you see, Your Grace, uh, there is only one option. Gideon's glare darkens. This guy sure knows how to brood. Ah, we should discuss this in privacy, Doctor. If it's about me, you should discuss it with me. Ah, this rampant disregard for proprietary is clear indication, Your Grace. A clear indication of what, Doctor? The Doctor looks at you with disdain. Of insanity. Uh, she must be sent to Bedlam at once, Your Grace. Bedlam? Are you sure you're not the crazy one? A girl gets a little stressed in the heat of the moment, and your solution is to lock her up and throw away the key? I am a world-class physician, young miss. My integrity will not be challenged by the likes of... A world-class quack is more like it. Enough! Gideon steps between you. He gently shoves you back onto the bed. Your strength goes out of you all at once as you fall back against the pillows. No one is going to bedlam tonight. But your grace, I said enough. There's a dark look in Gideon's eyes. No one seems inclined to argue. It's been a long day. I suggest we all get some rest. Gideon storms from the room without a backward glance. The doctor hesitates and follows close behind. When he's gone, you find Lily watching you. She smiles. I can't believe he refused the doctor. Lily shakes her head. She's smiling, but her eyes are sad. What? Do they not refuse doctors in the 21st century? Because I do. His Grace would never send you to Bedlam, miss. Not that place. Why not? He doesn't seem too concerned about me personally. Lily busies herself by dabbing at your forehead with a damp claw. I couldn't speak to it, miss. It, it isn't a maid's place. She looks nervous, evasive. Her hands are shaking. Clearly, I don't understand anything about this place. But at least one thing might be possible. Maybe Hot Guy isn't such an ass after all. He has a name! God damn it, this Hot Guy! Could you imagine being addressed as Hot Girl or Hot Guy? My God! And back then, it's even worse. Because he's a guy of respect and prestige, and he's a duke. Um, being referred to as Hot Guy, it's just no. Um, that being said, I, I'm enjoying the story, however. Um, I hope I'm doing the voices justice, changing up from our normal accents to, um, you know... Something more traditional to the 1880s. And then carried it through to our present with our main character, which I think we'll see dabbing in and back and forth. Dabbing. No, it actually means something other than dab on your haters, okay? Um, I feel like we'll keep going in and out, and then we'll be left with a choice. Do you want to stay in the future or the present? Or do you want to stay in the past? 
I feel like that'll be one of our final choices. Um, <clears throat> with that being said, I hope y'all did enjoy the video. Feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure if you do subscribe to hit that little bell. And also, head down the description below. Links to social media, our Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. Without further ado, I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.